Hello, and welcome to Many Minutes of Phil and Mills. I am Mills. I am Phil. Today, we're going to be talking about prevalent topics such as current events, societal issues, politics, and more. So, if you happen to get triggered by words or those who happen to have a different opinion and or have yet to leave your safe space bubble, this probably isn't the show for you. But for those who enjoy political commentary and the lively exchange of different ideas, we strongly invite you to listen and hopefully comment. So, Phil... Start us off on some juicy topics for today. Well, I can't imagine anybody would want to hear anything <clears throat> about what I want to talk about. So let's talk about something that's in the... Nobody wants to hear... Nobody... No, continue. No. Yeah. I, I'm just going to start with what's in the public discourse right now. Now, a couple of uh, hours, days, whenever this is going to come out. A couple of days ago, the uh, the news was all over, and I mean all over, a particular story about something that happened in California. Now, uh, you may not know this, but some Republican f- offices got firebombed and a couple Democrat offices got tagged by taggers. And so in California, for the day, I believe most people were evacuated and told not to come to work. So there were mobile offices being sprouted up and people were walking around doing stuff, but not in their offices because they were target. I think it's really scary and horrible that should happen to anybody. But at the same time, why target the Republicans specifically with violence? Because well, that they're in spray paint. Uh, what did you say? It was like destroy Re- capitalism. Yeah. 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 DNC is like, oh, we're the victim of terrorism. It's like your office wasn't inherently firebombed, yo. Yeah. But I mean, it's still worrisome because if you yeah. think about it, they're trying to send a message. And I don't know who they are or what message they're trying to send, but it definitely says something about how our country is feeling right now about the political season, about the election, about the process by which people are getting elected, and about the system as a whole. I can only imagine that the people that were firebombing it were thinking to themselves, I'm doing something to combat an oppressive system in some way. By inflicting violence upon others and destroying private property. I mean, that's an all that's just with the looting that's been happening or the looting that has happened in different protests, sitting there and destroying private property d- d- does not help your cause. Like, if you want to sit there and protest, okay, I don't vandalizing, like spraying, get rid of capitalism. <laughs> that's also not really helping your cause because you're vandalizing bad. If you want to sit there and protest, hold a protest hold a million man march with significantly less people it's getting a million people isn't that easy as occupy knows <laughs> and pretty much just go to your local town hall see what happens from there if you start getting traction you know head on up to washington do something like that write a very stern note you but sitting there vandalizing doesn't really help your cause. In fact, you kind of lose all credibility. And a lot of people will sit there and say, oh, well, they're just angry. It's like, well, inflicting violence upon others and destroying property. No, it doesn't matter if you sat there and (coughs) you're in an instance where, as you saw with North Carolina about the shooting, Mm. a lot of those people that were sitting there looting weren't even from the state. They're just taking advantage of the opportunity. Yeah, and that's, it's shameful. But the overall point is sitting there and vandalizing, looting, and doing all this, especially in this instance where their message wasn't inherently clear. Yeah. Like, you can't assume everybody knows what you're doing and for what purpose. Like, if these people intentionally firebombed it, motive is. Was their motive, let's throw a bomb at any building? To yeah. destroy capitalism. Yeah. Let's throw a bomb to send a message about welfare about the economy about politics about anything if you don't know or have a clear concise uh message that was left there like i don't think they left a little manifesto packet like right outside the place they firebombed this and is said, doing this yeah they didn't explain it so all you get is this just generic act of terrorism people that are freaked out you're causing mayhem and chaos and maybe just maybe That's all we know about it. So since that's all we know and that's all we can hear about it because nobody told us why it happened, we think you're just spreading chaos and that's your whole point. If you're looking to change a system, 
that's not what you're telling us. And even then, that's not an effective way to do it. <laughs> you're just inciting more chaos and causing <sighs> civil discourse. So, I mean... Nobody can know what's in your mind unless you tell it. If I were to go to your house and chop down a tree and walk away and give you a stern look, you wouldn't know what I was doing. If, but if you were to sit there and write a note and slip it under the door and say, stop stealing my gosh darn milk. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's probably not the most effective way to tell him to stop being a milk thief, Joe Chakras. <laughs> but at least you... You know, gave a point. Yeah, at you least know, you made your message clear. There, yeah, the next step from there is doing something more effective other than chopping down and vandalizing somebody's yard. It's just you know? shocking. But then again, as we've seen from multiple acts this year alone, this year alone has been chaos, <laughs> and it's been it's been a fun ride. Unfortunately, the ride never ends. Yeah, I I see more and more. That I think to myself, this election can't possibly get any worse. The next day something else happens. I'm like, well, it got worse. <laughs> it's over. I have an idea. Let's sit there and bomb a Republican office because let's just say their mindset was Trump said lewd things 11 years ago. Which we're not putting that in their mouths. We're just saying. We're just saying as an example. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, well. Okay, so my protest to a candidate, instead of simply not voting for him and running campaigns to not vote for him, we're going to incite violence against people vaguely related to him who have effectively said we're not even going to support him, even though he's our party leader right now. Yeah, These are people who aren't even going to vote for Trump in the primary because they don't even like him. The Republican Party disavowed Trump, but well, he's on their ticket. A lot of Republicans, I mean, are simply voting Republican just for Republican for because the way they view it is all right it's not a matter of trump or hillary because both are awful i more so want to hold on to republican ideals and, and party values yeah yeah and hopefully in their mindset which i mean it's kind of a risky thing because each candidate doesn't really hold any values at all <laughs> but sitting uh. there voting for a party because of what it stands for you know, okay, I can understand that, but assuming that every single person that happens to lean a little bit more right on the compass is a racist, sexist, bigot, Trump <laughs> supporter that wants to sit there and kick your keister. Yeah, PG thirteen rating word. <laughs> and no, that that's no, it's generalizing that makes you a bigot. But speaking of bigots. Once again, chopping bamboo. Just <laughs> you're chopping bamboo. Yeah, it, yeah. Before we started this episode, I was just like, yeah, I'm gonna play a little RuneScape. Probably play it while we're talking. I can multitask. I mean, it's not that difficult. I'm not stupid. <laughs> and then I was just like, wait, we're gonna record again. This is the one time this week I decide to chop bamboo. <laughs> so it's it's gonna be a regular thing. Yep. I'm, I'm, I have to chop bamboo when we do a podcast. But I see. Well, there goes my fun segue. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, speaking of being a bigot, so Miles, I heard you've made a status referencing transgender people and people immediately called you a bigot because you said the word transgender. Oh, uh, this is this is lovely. Let me let me put it out there. I support individuals that want to convert and become transgender, whether it's male to female, female to male, non-binary to Q, lemongrass to whatever. I mean... It's if it's fine with me as long as you don't sit there and you. It's it's with every single topic. If you like the Eagles, and I like Team B, that's yeah, fine. that's right. You better say Team B. Yeah, don't sit there and hound my ass. Ooh, a bird. Inspect a great pecker. <laughs> I just, just <laughs> dude, no lie. A bird just landed next to me, called a great pecker. <laughs> Miles, please. <laughs> uh, just nuke us already. <laughs> On topic is if you if you, if you I support transgender individuals, but it, don't sit there and hound my back about the way I'm supposed to view you because not everybody thinks the same. You know, just do your own thing. That's fine with me. 
<clears throat> I did that. Yeah. This, this, th- yeah. this, this particular instance is it was a biological male transitioning to female, tried out and got onto the girls' team. Do you remember what sport it was? Track. Mm. Track. And that's very important, and we'll get to that. <sighs> I was, I pretty much wrote. And I, not necessarily quote because I'm not pulling it up, mm-hmm. is if you are a biological male, that's fine if you transition to female, but that does, you can't physically change your chromosomes and your genes and your genetic preset. So in an instance like this, where he dominated the girls track team and the girls were rightfully, rightfully angry upset about it. Yeah. They have a reason to is because they're competing with somebody that has the body of a biological male. Now I call her a her because that's how she wants to be. She identifies as a female. That's great. You know, more power to you. That doesn't change the fact that you have a significant advantage. Adva- yeah. Significant biological advantage and physiological advantage over pretty much every single person on your team. And a lot of people will sit there and say, Oh, well, you know, not all guys are stronger than girls. But this guy in the first, yeah, first off, this guy in particular, and there's, there's no bell curve. You know, <laughs> I was brought this up by a person about a bell curve and pretty much everybody's the same. It's like that, that's not true. Let me, and I have stats from wonderful websites such as ncbi.nlm.nih.gov, CDC. Wait, dot gov? Like, what does that mean? Dot the gov? gov uh, it, it's, it's, Probably equivalent to the Tumblr blog spot, you know, <laughs> something like that. And Phil, for the sake of fact checking, I'm going mm-hmm. to send you some of these. You can put them on screen. Pretty much saying the differences between men and women uh-huh. biologically. We are not the same. It is, you just got it. <laughs> it is not the same. It is not sexist. It is not bigoted to say that men and women are the same. In fact, that's the beauty of it. Men can do certain things that women can't and vice versa. I think that's amazing. We are not perfectly equal. If we were, things first off would be very, very boring. But it just... So in this instance, this guy... It, I was hounded by a bunch of people pretty much saying that the article was insinuating that trans people don't um, belong in sports. <clears throat> and I rightfully commented back... No You never said that. <laughs> yeah, like, I never said that. The article never said that. You're putting words in my mouth and the article's mouth. So, what's your point? Somebody commented, oh, you didn't even read what she said. I'm like, yes, I did, considering I just replied to each and every single point. <laughs> so, they were probably just mad that I was angry at this. And some people are saying, oh, well, if somebody identifies as a girl, then they should be able to play on the team. It's like, no, because they have a distinct biological advantage. I, I don't I don't know what's so difficult to understand about that. If you're sitting there and you're on debate team and you are a, let's just say, biological female transitioning to male, you identify as a male, all right, you don't have any advantage over the other people because you're not participating in a physical sport where the tests are between um, participant A, B, and C. And it's all about, you know, your lung capacity, your muscle build, and all that. Men, on average, and not even just average, a significant portion, I gave you some links, 30, mm-hmm. 30 to 40% higher upper body strength, muscle mass. Lung capacity, this is huge with track. Anywhere from 10 to 15% higher than females in general. That alone, even with somebody that doesn't train as hard, is huge. The world record holder in tr- females track is around 10.48 seconds for a hundred meter. That is, if a male were to do that and try and qualify for the Olympics, he wouldn't even, he wouldn't even be qualified. So that you can, and it's not sexist to point this out. It's statistically pointing out the biological differences between men and women. There's a reason that we don't have men playing in the women's NBA. That would be sadistic and cruel. And if we allowed participants 
to participate in sports on the basis of, oh, well, I identify as this, I identify as that. The why the hell isn't LeBron James going into the women's NBA and be like, oh, well, I'm actually a female. Completely <laughs> dominating everybody. That's well, not how it works. My, f- <laughs> oh, <clears throat> I'm sorry. My firm belief, and I appreciate hearing your uh, side of it, and I agree to an extent that it's based on fairness, but at the same time, that one chick who posted uh, comments at first, I thought she was ridiculous because she kept saying the article was insinuating things and talking about how it was all implied that people were inferior. And I'm like, uh, the article didn't even sound biased towards that. And I'm usually pretty good at picking up implications. It didn't call anybody like a tranny or anything. It didn't use bigoted language. It wasn't even racist. Oh my gosh. But it, it, it didn't say anything like that. But then her second argument really got me thinking, which was you could literally have a biological advantage no matter what. And I think personally that that means that people who already have an advantage should not be excluded from these things. So if anything, it'll just make other people try harder. And if you do find out through this process of having a mixed gender league that suddenly all the women are the low 50% and then all the men are at the highest 50%, then maybe you should say, okay, let's go back to splitting the leagues because this isn't fair to the women or the men who men are impossible to lose against. And I mean, like men are, it's impossible for the men to lose and the women just always lose because that would not be fair. Especially but, depending on the yeah. sports too, because especially in MMA, which this was touched up upon it, Men have, men are generally taller, denser bones, larger hands, and especially in MMA, that is huge. So when a transgender male to female, mm-hmm. so by, born a male is now identifies as a girl, completely beat the ever loving crap out of a girl, that is not some freak accident. That is just the way it is. I mean, to have co-ed teams, I'm fine with that. It depends on the sport, to be honest. Yeah. Because co-ed football, we're talking about American football, like, uh, like, (laughs) really? No. 400 pound men getting tackled by 125 pound, 150 pound women with the muscle mass of like a stick in comparison to the tree trunks that are the linebackers linebackers can't fight linebackers in football. People break each other in football. I mean, you retire at 30, you have the body of a 70-year-old man. Yeah. It's a bunch of random crap here. I, I While I was taking a nice, healthy you know, <laughs> work, you don't have to clock out for when you go to the bathroom. Yeah. So I rightfully poop during work because mm-hmm. if you think about it, I'm getting paid to do that. So... I pretty much just wrote, if women want to compete with men, all the power to them. The difference between this and men against women is a distinct is a distinct biological advantages women um, have against men. Disadvantages. I would hope that women know the risks as all um, and all because she can perform against some men. I would hope the women knows the risks because performing. What the hell did I write here? <laughs> I would knows the risk as all because she oh as all because she can perform against the, some men does not mean she is the same in any way. Side note: explaining basic biology and acknowledging that there's a significant amount of men are stronger than women is not sexism. So shut your yaps, you fruity leftist SJWs. Facts aren't sexist or racist all because it doesn't fit with your agenda. Now back to what I was saying: if women want to compete with men. To me, that's cool and that's empowering, but she should understand the risks that come with it. And if she gets hurt or seriously injured, it is on her and only her. And yes, I can victim blame because she would have put herself in a situation where both parties are completely consenting to the physical acts and are being performed. Example, soccer, football, MMA, rugby, or any sport with physical contact. So you can't sit there and victim blame and say, oh, well, it's kind of her fault. Well, she consented and she knew the risks. If you're going to sit there and put a 120 pound female wide receiver uh and she gets completely laid out by a 300 pound linebacker well i mean that's you can't really say like anything other than well 
she kind of knew the risks going into that if she happens mm-hmm. to break her legs. But looking at it, all things equal, that happens anyway for the men that go into the field too. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Anybody that goes into a sport should expect to get hurt. But it's disproportionate the amount of damage that will be done. But again, it all comes down to what the uh, the league themselves say, what their rules are, why they want to separate the genders distinctly, and whether or not that has an impact on how the game is played. So, like, if suddenly linebackers had to wear massive 200 square foot pillows that are tightly compacted and become like <clears throat> this dense lining of pillow so that women could play and not get brutally murdered every time they bump into a linebacker. Then, Maybe a little key that perhaps we should change and not have a situation where we have to completely uh, handicap half the guys just for the sake that they don't completely destroy the women in the same way that they're completely destroying men. But there are leagues of people that could play with a handicap. And that's fine. That's how the game's played. That's how the game's played. I'm not going to tell people they're wrong to rule a league a certain way. Just because it's a company, it's an organization, it's something with clients, and it's something with employees. And at that point, it's just a business like any other. Yeah. Bottom line is, I feel it's very unfair in a general term to let biological males compete against biological females at a teen level where they don't spend their whole entire life training for it. But that's not accounting for things like estrogen from an early point. Testosterone levels, upbringing, yeah. how trained. So there, there's there's so many variables. But just saying as a basis term of male versus female without those other variables, I mean, then you kind of get into kind of murky territory of, all right, are we going to anal- analyze every single person's personal upbringing how much training they got and create so many separate leagues so that everybody who's playing is completely equal in the field that they're playing. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I don't think we care so much about equality in sports. We care about winners and losers. Pretty much. Just how it is. <laughs> yeah. And even, even then, equality in, equality in sports, I mean, I don't really think that that's an issue nowadays. Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to think of any instances of... Mm, discrimination upon race or sex in sports. Now, I can understand why a lot of females would be pissed off if a guy joined their team and rightfully dominated them. To me, that's unfair. I mean, you can put in towards the other variables. If he happens to have insanely low testosterone levels to the point where his body is pretty much a female's, Mm -hmm. I mean... (laughs) I don't know. I don't necessarily have a comment on that. But it would also, I, as somebody that has played football for eight to nine years, I've seen the way that even at a high school and even a middle school level, some of these guys hit. Yeah. It, 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 it's hard. It's, it's brutal, let alone at a high school, let alone college, let alone NFL level. And that applies to males and females. All it takes is 20 Gs of force to damage a person's head, which means if you're getting a 24 G of force uh, impact and your helmet only serves to absorb 4 to 5 Gs of that, you could still get damaged really bad. Uh, People die. I've had two concussions from playing football. It's not fun. I mean, a helmet can only do so much. You're going to, mm-hmm. if you're sitting there and you're about to cross the, uh, the end zone, the other team's objective is to prevent you from crossing that line. They are going to do everything in their power, whether it be lightly tap you or physically throw all their might <laughs> to the force of a truck to bash you. That's what they're going to do. And I played against some kids. I'm not going to mention his name just for... I don't, I don't even know if I'm friends with him on Facebook. <laughs> but this kid was around five foot one, stick, like 70, 80 pounds, tried off for the football team. Yeah, he got rightfully destroyed yeah. one of those times by me. In the moment, it was fun as hell to sit there and completely lay this kid out and watch him go 10 feet. But you got to think that a lot of the girls in that um, in that middle school, high school kind of age group aren't a whole lot different from his physical 
stature. Yeah. So putting them, especially a significant amount of them, on a team and the co-ed, you're going to see a huge difference in performance of the sexes. Everybody, with the exception of possibly 1%, that one girl, which I know some of them, so, oh damn, some of those <laughs> girls in high school for soccer, they were fast. They were brutal. They could yeah, take they hit fast. after I mean, hit. I mean, hey, they, they train for their sport. They train for their craft in the same way that men do for this, this, and that. So all the power to them. Mm -hmm. But if you sit there and you put a complete co-ed team versus who qualifies to get into this position and that position, you're going to see a noticeable difference. If a woman can sit there and rightfully dominate half the guys on the team because she's just a total beast... Boom, put that girl at first string. I want her as my halfback. I want her as my wide receiver. You know, <laughs> I think I think this leads into we, we, we have kind of two opinions on this, but it's not exactly conflicting. You know what I mean? Yeah, we understand yeah. the two points like Phil overall summarize your point about co-ed sports, trains and sports. Well, well they, they, I think they I should think be, they should be able, able to do anything, do anything they, want, they want, and if that, that includes going, going into a co-ed co gender, gender situation, situation then, then more power, more to, power them. to them. It, it all comes down to the people running, running the organizations organization, and how they, how want, they to want to separate things. things. All right. I mean, there's really nothing about that that really comes off as I disagree with. So that's it. I, I take it slightly a different way where I feel that for... Basically, just a man who happens to identify. You, you can't sit there and join a female's team because you simply identify as a female. If you're transitioning and you happen to be transgender, I mean, it's a little bit of a different story because you're not just sitting there and being, huh, I want to go into a girl's sport. Let me identify as a female. No, that's first of all, that's a shitty thing to do. There's our R rating for the, uh, the episode. But I'll censor it. No worries. I censor everything. For the most part, I agree with you. If you know, more power to people, do whatever the hell you want. It's where I stand as a libertarian. But they got to understand the risks and the distinct biological and physiological disadvantages that certain people have against group A, B, and C. I don't even think they should. I don't think it matters. I think it's all about freedom of choice, baby. Uh, I'm just looking to make sure we don't have a significant amount of females in, with concussions in the hospital because they decided to completely do 50%, 50% co-ed teams. Hey, it's a woman's right to choose. That is true. <laughs> Doesn't matter what we want. It's her uh, body. Well, now that you bring that up, we because we're not females and we're not trans, we're not allowed to talk about this topic. Oh, right. I forgot. I'll just delete the yeah. last like 20, yeah. 30 minutes of, uh, got rid of everything. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I want people to understand that with this program, the way Phil and I are is we don't have, we wouldn't be doing this if we had a discrimination against a certain group of people. We wouldn't be doing this if we had a bias towards a certain group of people. Yeah, we have our biases about certain topics, but that's rooted in the facts and where they come from. But talking about, Feminism, talking about Black Lives Matter, talking about transgenderism. We won't be targeting the individuals. We're going to be targeting the ideology behind the topic. And mm -hmm. if it happens to get to a point, which I hope it doesn't, that you feel personally attacked, I would very much like you to comment and let us know why you feel personally attacked. And we will do everything in our power to explain why we said what we did. Because different opinions are scary and I'm scared of them. Yeah, let's kind of take it into a more lighthearted, lighthearted little two minute transition. And so, the music thing. Oh, yeah, we uh, we're going to be playing music and stuff. So, <laughs> I mean, I can introduce that. That's not a problem. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, how about this weather this past couple of days? It's been a uh, too warm. Do not. Yeah, like it. it really it really kind of bothers me. I wake up every morning with the exception of tomorrow because it's like the one day a week that I don't have to go in <laughs> super early. I wake up every single day at 4.45 a.m. It sucks. My shift starts at 5.30. Um, every single morning I go in, I have to sit there and wear. I mean, I wear long pants. I wear a long shirt. This is the way it is. It's usually chilly. 
I wear a long jacket. I also have a very thick balaclava covering my face <laughs> with the exception of this. Mm -hmm. And I put that on. I started biking halfway there. I'm sweating my ass off and I'm sitting there thinking, what? <laughs> so I'm thinking, all right, maybe I'm just, you know, feeling a little bit hotter today. Yeah. And yeah, hmm. so, they're always, they're always hot. hot. <laughs> uh, if no, that no, didn't no. turn anybody off, whew, oh, I've got baby. some bad news for you. Sorry. But Sorry. When I left and I started going home and I walked outside, even without anything on, I was burning up and I'm thinking, mm -hmm. all right, cool. Thank you, son. <laughs> so that's, thanks, that's thanks, my little two son. cents on the weather. I, I just wish it would make up its mind by this I mean, December, it's either going to be one or two things, insanely hot or basically Antarctica. <laughs> well, it well, could be either. Be either. <laughs> it could be both. Hey, one week, <laughs> burr, the next week. <laughs> well, it's well, that global, global warming. warming. You know how it is. How it is. <laughs> yeah, global warming is caused by cow farts. Mm -hmm. <sighs> <laughs> Among Damn, other things. Well, maybe the vegans are on to something. Ooh. Well, I wouldn't admit that ever. No matter what I admit that I agree with or don't agree with, that's one thing I would never admit is that I agreed with the vegan. I am a straight male, but boy, do I love meat. Oh, boy. As so, uh, Our song shall hopefully be playing now. Nope, I got to introduce it first. After the break. All right, cool. <laughs> so uh, end of this episode before we transition to the next episode, so you'll see that at a coming date. Uh, let's just say this song was uh, produced by me and recorded by me and composed by me for suck. <laughs> for this show. So it's our theme song. Hey, hey, everybody. Let's get down to business. Let's get down to business. And cut. <laughs> 